Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this video, we're going to show you how to set up your Lingren Pittman electric reel. So we fish with the uh, variable speed Lingren Pittman reel, and we've got this reel set up on a Winthorpe adjustable butt. And the reason why we have these adjustable butts is because we can move this little pin right here and we could adjust the rod at whatever angle we need it to be at, right? And so we fish the one in the back a little bit higher so when we're turning it clears the, uh, the motor, the jug rod. Um, and then we fish the tip rod at a little bit of a different angle. The other thing that you're gonna notice is we have zero degree rod holders on the boat. And you can see how this rod spins around. And what the zero degree rod holders do is they maintain the line coming out of the tip of the rod to be going straight out. If you have a 15 or 30 degree um, rod holder on your boat, even if it's swivel, as the rod turns, it's gonna pivot within the angle of that rod, of the rod holder, and it's gonna make the line start coming out of the side of your tip, and it's gonna start rubbing against the tip, and that will start to degrade your line. So if you're gonna get into this, I highly recommend put some zero degree rod holders on your boat, or at least where you're gonna put your rods to go sword fishing. The other thing that we have on our reels is, if you look at these stickers up here, you're gonna notice that they've got numbers on them. This is another thing that we highly recommend that you do is to set the drags on the LP so that you know exactly how much heat and pressure of drag you are putting on the fish. Now to do this, you cannot put your, your, your rod in a rod holder and just pull out with a scale. You've gotta do this, do this at home, do this at the marina, somewhere where you can have your rod in the rod holder with the rod and you're gonna pull straight down into the water the same way the fish will be pulling. And the reason for that is when you're fighting a swordfish and they're straight down, they're pulling down, your rod is putting additional drag onto that fish as you're fighting it. Where if you pull the line straight out at home or you're pulling it straight out of the dock or wherever you're at, you're capturing the drag of the reel but you're not capturing that extra drag that the rod is putting on to, to the fish as well. Very important guys, when you're fighting the fish, you really wanna have very light drag. When, you know, the battle is, this is not like Wicked Tuna, that you're muscling these things up. They're big fish, but it's a very much a finesse game when you're reeling them up. And when you take that lead off, you wanna be somewhere around 10, 12, 13, very light drag when you're fighting that fish, right? And if you don't have your reel set, you have no idea how much drag you're putting on the fish. So label the drags here. We put these on with a label maker, we stuck them on. The other thing that we like to do is we label here this number 18 that you see here is how many times we've turned this dial from zero all the way up to set these drags. And the reason why we do that is we do a lot of chartering and when you're fishing with people, for some reason, everybody wants to turn this little knob. And the second that somebody turns this knob forward or backwards, however many clicks they turned it, now these drags are not set to the same specifications that you set them. So that's why we put this label here. So if somebody were to turn this, we know that we're at 18 clicks is where we set this drag. We'd back it all the way back down and we'd start clicking again until we got to 18 and all of our settings are how we set it. The other thing to note on this little dial here, every time you turn it up, you're adding three pounds of drag to it. And every time you turn it down, you're removing three pounds of drag from your drag system on the LP. But highly recommend that you guys do that, even if you're not doing chartering and you're just fishing by yourself with family and friends, somebody's gonna turn this dial and you're not gonna know where, how many clicks you are at when you set this. So that's why we label it, our, our, this is our tip rod. Our jug rod has a different number here. Every one of the LPs is different on how you set the drags. There'll be a different, you know, clicks. But this one, we've got it at 18. And you can see here on the side, we've got all the, the numbers and going really all the way up to number three, we're at 36 pounds there. Uh, if you ever needed to put more drag and you're at 36, I don't think you're ever gonna need that for a swordfish, but if you're tuna fishing, whatever, you know that you could click this one more time and now you've got 39 pounds of drag on it. All right, guys, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the buttons, right? So the LPs, the variable speed has three buttons. The one that's not a variable speed will have four buttons, okay? And really the difference is that the one that doesn't have variable speed will have a high and a low, right? So it reels fast, reels slow. This one is variable speed. So by turning this dial, you can adjust the speed of 
the retrieval rate of the motor. And what you have here is these two red buttons. Any one of them will make the reel turn on manually. You press it and the reel will turn until you take your finger off of it. Either one of the red ones. If you want the reel to go on automatic, you're gonna press and hold the two red ones. And once you press and hold it for a second, the reel will keep going automatic. So you don't have to keep holding your finger on it. The other button that you see here in the middle is the black button. And you hear that noise that it makes. And so you could turn it off and you could turn it on by pressing the button. And what that does is when your reel is spinning backwards, right? It will start making this noise beeping over and over and over to let you know that line is going out, right? If you're Wahoo trolling or something like that, you, you need to know when your reel is, is, you know, the fish is pulling drag out of it. Um, I usually don't set it on the tip rod. I do like to set it on the jug rod. So once I'm at the wheel and I'm driving the boat and I'm, I'm focusing on the tip rod and somebody's letting the line out on the jug rod, I like to hear how fast it's beeping. It'll beep as the revolutions go by and then I, I know with my ear if it's going too fast or too slow, right? But normally we don't really have these on um, except for the jug rod. Now this does have on the back here, it has a little knob underneath the motor that you could turn and adjust and you can adjust the volume of the beeping and you can make it beep louder or you can make it beep lower, right? And turning it, it will either way will raise the volume and lower the volume so you can adjust that as well on your reel. The next thing that we're gonna talk about guys is this counter that you see here on your LP. It's got a screen um, that shows you the numbers. And what this, these numbers mean, it, these are not in feet, these are in what we call revolutions or revs. You hear people talking about revs. So this is how many times this spool has turned Okay, so when you're sword fishing, you know, it might be in 1500 feet and we have 2200 revs of line out or 2200 revolutions. That means that this spool has turned 2200 times and that's what this measures right here. The next thing guys I want to show you that's very important is if you lose line on your reel or somebody trips on your plug and we highly recommend you, you pick up your plugs, get them up. We always keep our plugs up off the floor because in the heat of the battle, somebody walking by, you don't want somebody to trip, get hurt on your plug, or to yank it out of the socket, that's even worse, right? And especially if you're fighting a fish, you have to manually press the button all the way up and you have no idea how far the fish is. But if you lose line, get some plugged, anything like that, what you need to do is you press and hold the black button and your numbers will flash on the screen and it resets your reel back to zero at that point okay and then you'll be able to to reel again if you want to manually reel if you're going to put line onto your your reel and you want to manually you got an empty spool you're going to put line on it if you press and hold the red and the black button and you keep them your reel is instantly going to start turning but once you've got both of these button pressed for a few seconds you're going to see your led screen here is going to flash one time the numbers and then your reel will keep spinning by itself and this is used a lot when you're first putting line on your reel and your counter's at zero. You, you press and hold the black and the red button and your reel will automatically just keep going until you press the red button to stop it. And then the last thing that we want to talk about, we've talked about the cords being picked up. One of the very important things, these reels are, you, you'll never need to buy another reel again when you buy an LP. And so you want to take good care of your reel, right? You want to make sure you're cleaning all of this very good when you get back, you get all the salt off of it. And the other thing that we like to do is we don't like to wrap our cord around this thing. We don't like to wrap things around our line. So we've got these two little hooks right here. We coil this thing up and we have zip ties in our tackle bag and we zip tie our cord on here just to keep it nice stowed away. Makes it for easy travel to and from the fishing grounds to store your reel in your garage or wherever you store it. And it keeps the cord nice and collected here. Guys, give this a go. Let me know, hit me up on the comments if you have any questions that you encounter when you're trying to set up your LP reel.